My name is uh, Kai Fu Lin. Uh, I have been working on artificial intelligence for almost 40 years. U.S. will lead in breakthrough innovations, but China is better at execution. And I thought a year ago the time has come for China to prove its prowess in execution. And rather than investing in someone, I would do it myself this time. I think a lot of the saying uh, in, uh, in media that China is way behind is not accurate. Now that said, uh, companies like Meta, Google, Microsoft are putting 50, 100 times more resources in this, so we certainly don't take it lightly. Good afternoon, I'm Yoon Hee Kim, Technology Editor for Corporate and Personal Tech, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by Kai-Fu Lee. Kai-Fu is considered one of the early pioneers of artificial intelligence. He's the founder and chair of the venture capital firm Sinovation Ventures, and also the CEO of Zero One.ai. Kai-Fu, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So we've had big news this week from Apple. Apple jumped into the AI frenzy, saying that it's going to be adding AI to Siri and also uh, announced a partnership with OpenAI. America's ChatGPT moment happened about 18 months ago. You intend to bring China's ChatGPT moment. What's the timeline for that and what will it mean for the global AI race? I think generative AI is the most important technology ever uh, to face humanity, and uh, GPT-4 and ChatGPT were amazing technologies that has now educated the market, and the Gen AI wave is going great in the U.S. However, OpenAI decided not to make uh, ChatGPT available to some countries, including China, and I feel Gen AI is a great technology that should be beneficial and accessible to all. So I started Zero-One.ai 14 months ago, and we embarked on building a model as good as GPT-4, which we recently accomplished. And now the next step is to build a ChatGPT-like product uh, in China and educate the market. We launched the product about a month ago. It's getting a great reception. And I hope the ChatGPT moment uh, will come soon. Can you talk a little bit about the differences between the China AI model and the U.S. AI model? What makes you believe that the China AI model will succeed? Uh, in my book, AI Superpowers, I talked about U.S. leading the world in breakthrough innovations, which is exactly what happened with Gen AI. And I also talked about Chinese entrepreneurs and engineers uh, working incredibly hard and are excellent and in working as a team and using massive data in China uh, to play catch up, which did happen with earlier AI technologies like deep learning. And um, uh, with Gen AI, I think China has been in the catch up mode and Zero One.ai is the first company in China that is catching up with GPT-4 performance. Of course, OpenAI and other companies will build the next generation of technologies and um, it's going to be as I predicted in my book, AI Superpowers. Uh, if there are breakthroughs, US will continue to lead. If most technologies are known and it's about execution, then China with its uh, tenacious, hardworking culture and the tremendous market opportunity uh, will be able to catch up. So when do you think that moment will come, Kai Fu? Well, taking zero one AI as an example, 14 months ago, we had absolutely nothing. Uh, no code, no technology, no demo, no GPT, uh, and uh, actually no people. And at that time, it would be fair to say we were 
uh, six or seven years behind. And at this moment in time, we're six to nine months behind. So the catch up has already been happening and rather dramatically. And uh, going forward, we hope that can continue. China has probably more AI researchers than any other country in the world. But US tech leaders and politicians say that the US models, such as Gemini or GPT-4, is far ahead of um, China. Is that true? That's patently false. Uh, you can go to any of the arenas where our model is pitted against uh, Gemini and uh, uh, GPT-4 and uh, Anthropic Claude. And basically, we're neck to neck, uh, slightly behind their very best model, but ahead of all of their other models and also ahead of other top um, Western companies like uh, Cohere and uh, Mistra. Uh, we're well ahead of them. These arenas hosted by Stanford and Berkeley are third party efforts using real users uh, in the Berkeley case to test. And there are millions of users who test. So the results are reliable and that it is um, absolutely the case that we have caught up. So can you explain kind of the key differences for, for the average person? What is the key difference between the China AI model and the US AI model? Uh, the US model is uh, taking big risks, trailblazing and inventing technologies like transformer uh, behind uh, the GPT technologies. And uh, this is extremely admirable and uh, something we respect greatly. And I believe most future breakthroughs in AI and perhaps other sciences will come from the US. China's advantage is focused on execution. So in building a great model, it's not just about inventing. And once the inventing is done, others can build, just like other companies like Mistra and others have done a decent job as well. Uh, China's advantage is doing whatever it takes to uh, catch up. And that includes collecting more data, cleansing the data, uh, prioritizing the data, uh, selecting the great data to make sure the training goes well. It includes using uh, infrastructure technologies, which are uh, distributed computing and networking technologies to get uh, the most out of every GPU. And uh, most importantly, China is simply better in building applications if you look at how TikTok beat Instagram, uh, WeChat is better than WhatsApp, uh, and also new uh, products in Xi'in and uh, Temu, uh, it shows that China's method of uh, pivoting and uh, from zero to one and lean startup uh, methodologies invented in America, by the way, have been perfected in China. And uh, when applications becomes the main game, China will have a major advantage. I want to shift gears to talk about the future of the internet because artificial intelligence is starting to be incorporated into search with Google's SGE. Clearly, Google is not available in China. So how are the Chinese players navigating um, integrating AI into search? Uh, there are several products already in both US and China that really challenge the Google hegemony. In the US, there's the Perplexity product. In China, there are two products already gaining a lot of usage, uh, not developed by my company, but other companies. And the real key point here is that search is one of the killer apps because people used to look for information and websites come back and we click on them. That was the old Google model. The new model is we ask a question and get one answer. And that is what uh, ChatGPT pointed all of us in that direction. What companies like Perplexity have done is they've integrated traditional search um, and the ChatGPT-like answering capability and are able to provide a targeted comprehensive answer that is, uh, in most cases, better than traditional search, especially if you have a more complex query. And obviously, companies like Google has have both search and the uh, Gen AI capabilities. And in theory, Google ought to do better. But companies like Google face a major innovator's dilemma, which is in order to integrate the Gen AI capabilities, uh, they, have, they will cannibalize their traditional search advertising revenue. Will Google or any company dare to do that? 
and also the cost of serving up a Gen AI search answer is much higher than traditional search. So Google faces the issue of cannibalizing its advertising revenue and also at the same time increasing its serving cost. So that is a huge dilemma um, for search companies to uh, embrace and extend its search with Gen AI technologies. And we'll see how that unfolds. Early experiments suggest that a lot of the answers that you get with AI in search, they're not accurate and they hallucinate. How do we square that problem? Uh, the best way today is actually to integrate the parametric approach taken by Gen AI and the non-parametric approach taken by search engine. So if you actually have a search engine or can call another search engine's API, you'll be able to get all, a, a lot of very good answers from search and then feed that search result to Gen AI and say, give an answer considering these as prominent, recent, non-hallucinated, um, relatively factual uh, content. And then Gen AI will integrate what search engine returns with its own uh, ability to leverage its language model and uh, knowledge base. So this technology is called RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And this is the technology with which uh, a better search and uh, less hallucination and also increased recency uh, are simultaneously uh, implemented. And companies like Perplexity have done that uh, in our products uh, for bringing about China's ChatGPT moment. We also use RAG. So our product called Wanzhi uh, currently is a RAG calling search engine API integrated with our own uh, uh, GPT-4 level performance model called eLarge. So it's really the best of both worlds and um, uh, is more direct targeted than search engines and it's more recent and less hallucinatory than the standard uh, Gen AI um, model output. When we look out into the future um, and look at the transformational aspects of AI, what's the right timeline? Well, it's happening right now. Uh, we, with any new technology, we will have to deal with issues brought about by the technology that didn't exist before. So uh, with the electricity, we had uh, electrocution and had to invent circuit breakers. With the P internet, we had to invent um, uh, antivirus software to prevent PCs becoming infected. So similarly, uh, everyone is working really hard to deal with the major shortcomings of Gen AI, such as hallucination, recency, and as I mentioned, RAG to a large extent uh, is that circuit breaker for Gen AI, and we're excited to see this technology getting adoption uh, globally. Uh, with that, we're looking forward. Uh, all of us working on Gen AI believe what's called scaling law, which means uh, by just having more data and more GPU, the Gen AI will automatically get smarter with some tweaking. And uh, so we can expect every year Gen AI to be much, much smarter than last year. Look at in the example of GPT 3.5 to 4 is a huge jump. And then I'm sure OpenAI's GPT 5 will be another jump. So with rapidly improving uh, technologies uh, and also uh, dramatically cost, large cost reduction. If you look at GPT 3.5 and 4 API, uh, their costs have come down about 10 times a year. And increased competition and smarter infrastructure technologies is causing that cost to go down further. Our recently launched uh, eLarge model is roughly comparable with GPT-4 in performance, but only at one quarter the cost. So uh, with uh, the problems being fixed uh, by technologists and technologies rapidly improving due to scaling law and inference costs coming down greatly, uh, we certainly expect uh, in the next one year, we'll see many great apps and in two years even more because uh, inference costs will come down 10 times in one year and 100 times in two years. Another way to look at it is if someone last year needed GPT-4 to build an application, but the APIs were too expensive, well, now it's more than 10 times lower in costs. It's no longer expensive. So rarely do we have such technology improvement and cost reduction happening and multiplying at the same time 
And that's what we're looking forward to. So to answer your question, I think one and a half to two years, we will see Gen AI blossom in every application. Every existing app will be rewritten with Gen AI uh, inside. And there will be many new apps that couldn't be done before that will now be done and creating uh, really amazing uh, technologies that people will embrace. ChatGPT is really just the beginning. There will be many, many more in the next year and a half to two years. Kai Fu, you seem to be very optimistic about the outlook, but I'm just wondering if there's anything that really worries you about AI. Certainly, I think there are many existing externalities, uh, hallucination, uh, the field is doing a good job reducing it, but uh, there will still be hallucination. And as a raw technology, it can be put to good use and bad use. Uh, there will be people who will use it for, for uh, false advertising, for misleading people, especially at times of elections. Uh, it can be used by, for example, bad people, terrorists, to learn how to build um, biological weapons uh, and uh, uh, nuclear weapons, et cetera, by, uh, as the model gets smarter and smarter, uh, it will teach people who want to learn things that to do um, bad things. And that kind of harm uh, is something that a lot of AI researchers are quite concerned about. Uh, I feel that technology problems need to be addressed by a combination of new technologies uh, that reduce and even prevent harm, but also regulations will be needed. Uh, otherwise, this amazing technology in the hands of bad people can bring uh, unprecedented harm to humanity. Well, it's been really fascinating to hear about the latest developments in AI in China. Thank you so much for joining us, Kai Fu Li. Thank you.